Hello everyone, this is Jimmy, and welcome to episode 16 of SevTech Ages. Last episode, we built this uh, crusher, right, with the intent to process stuff like stardust and black quartz. And I also put some other uh, metals through it, some other ores, thinking that the dust we could just throw in a smeltery to process. But as it turns out, most of these dusts cannot actually be cooked in a smeltery. In order to process it, we have to use a arc furnace. So the arc furnace is a uh, one of industrial uh, or one of immersive engineering's largest um, and most power hungry uh, machines. So it's built using our blast furnace bricks, but uh, maybe I will leave this blast furnace here because it's already kind of automated, and I'll just build another one over here. And uh, it's a pretty cool machine, but it takes a lot of infrastructure to get it running. So let's get started on that process. First things first, we have to build the arc furnace itself. All right, I think this is the way we want it to face. Um, I think this block here will end up being the input and this one will end up being the output. Although I'm not 100% sure about that. So I guess we'll find out as we go. Anyways, it's built from a rather large number of different components. So let's just start placing them down. Thank goodness for that in-world preview. This structure would have been quite the challenge to build without it. Now if I can find my engineer's hammer, we can form it. Um, where do I click? Come on, game. It's gotta be one of these blocks somewhere. There we go, the cauldron. Uh, I think I built it sideways. Whoops. This is the output, that's the input, but I wanted the input to face the, the chest here. <clears throat> Alright, well, time to tear it all down and build it again. Alright, let's see how we did this time around. I think that is better. So yeah, we're inputting from the side facing the crusher, and we're just outputting the opposite side. As for power, um... We have to connect power up to these three contacts, so let's do that. And uh, it looks like I'll have to run another uh, one of these relays over here. So now that this is fully formed and plugged in, you see it has power. We're still not quite ready to use it. Let's take some of our ores, um, and I think it can process like up to 12 stacks of stuff at a time. So let's just start filling it up. You see, even though we put stuff in there, um, it doesn't process. And that's because to use the arc furnace, you need electrodes. And I think that probably shows up in here. No, it doesn't. So electrodes are these little, uh, I guess think of them as like wires that power the whole thing. So we need hot graphite ingots to make electrodes. And these are made by hot graphite dust which is made by squeezing coke dust. So we should have plenty of coal coke. All we have to do is make the squeezer so that we can turn in, turn the coke dust into graphite dust. So let's make a squeezer. Thankfully, the squeezer is a lot simpler than the uh, arc furnace. So normally this is used in the processing of like plants down into biofuel. But I think we have our fuel situation is uh is solid enough that I'm not going to at least for now I'm not going to start making biodiesel. All right, 
Oops, I have to change the direction that piston faces. There we go. Uh, not that block. All right, there we go. So I need to plug this in and then um, let's go make some coke dust. So we should have some cold coke in here. Uh, we have some more in here. Let's process this down into dust and then process that into the electrodes. With our hop graphite ingots in hand, we can now craft the electrodes. Now, for some reason, there's two ways to craft electrodes. We can either do it on the metal press and get half durability ones, or craft it on the engineer's workbench and get full durability ones. I don't know, but um, we're going to choose to make the full durability ones because it's foolish not to. So, uh, I never made the pattern for that. Whoops. I guess that's why. What does it take to make the electrodes pattern? That's not too bad. We just need one dust. All right, let's go make that real quick. I should have, yeah, I have enough dust left here. So it's, we squeeze the dust and, uh oh, where did all our power go? Are you out? No, you're not out of power. I don't know where all our power went. Anyways, um, so we can squeeze, we make coke dust and then we squeeze the coke dust into hop graphite dust. And then we can just craft the electrodes. Of course, I'm missing paper. How am I out of paper? It's probably all on my, um, it's all right here. Yeah, there we go. So I have plenty of paper. All right, so now let's go make our electrodes. And no, please. Did I get them? Let me see why this isn't actually crafting. No, nothing looks wrong. All right, one second. I don't know what fixed it. All I did was move the ingots from that slot to this slot, and it looks like I was able to craft them for real. I don't think the game's going to yoink these away from me. So it turns out we only need three. You put them in these slots, and I think you can only put one in each slot. So I'll just put the spare in our output chest for now. And then if we look at this, it will um, try, it'll attempt to cook every single piece at the same time, but uh, it uses a lot of power to do so. So the total power draw is, because it's attempting to do every stack at once, right? There's 512 RF a tick per stack times 12. So it's trying to use uh, like 6K RF a tick. I wonder why it can't be supplied with 6K RF a tick though. Our network should be, right? This thing should be more than capable of supplying 6K a tick. Let's see. Ah, cause these are, in, how do I make these output more than 512 a tick then? Hmm. I might have to. Ow, ow, ow. I might have to look into this a second. Let me see how I can make our generator output a little bit more power. Unless, if 512 is the per output limit, then we're going to have to work around that. All right, let's see if I can find a solution here. All right, I think I figured out a solution, at least for now. Um, if I, instead of using a RF emitter, or a flux generator, which I think produces uh, RF or redstone flux. If I use a forge energy emitter, which produces it as, you know, forge energy. Ostensibly the same, but there's some differences in the back end in the code. Um, I can directly interface with HV wires instead of having to go through these power adapters. The power adapters claim they can do 12.8K a tick. Maybe they mean per second. I don't know. Either way, I can skip having the power adapters and directly connect to the uh, a forge energy emitter. So let me get rid of these power adapters, switch everything over to directly, you know, interfacing with forge energy emitters, and that should solve our low output problem. There we go, that's more like it. Now that um, this machine is receiving enough power, we can see how fast it is. It takes, uh, I think it's like one second or five seconds 
to do each of these uh to smell the grit but it also um does 12 at a time which makes it altogether a pretty fast uh furnace now again to do so it uses a metric boatload of rf but that's fine um also it turns out for some reason this port the orange port is not the output this is the output why is the port that does not have a label the output but the port with an orange the color that means output everywhere else in the mod not the output um i don't know don't don't ask me apparently i, I suspect this is input i guess let's find out uh it's, it just seems like why does it have an orange dot if it's the input but uh, let's see, we have to smelt basically all of this stuff I want to smelt into ingots. So let's just grab some, throw it in here. The reason I wanted to use the omnidirectional hopper, in addition to the fact that, you know, I can face whatever direction, is that uh, it accepts speed upgrades. So let's see, if I do this, will input come in? No, it doesn't look like it. It's not pushing the silver in. Huh. Then what, what is the input port? Is this the input? Let's try that then. Alright, so this port is the input for the these slots, which are like the alloying slots. So if we look at, um, let's see, let's find an alloy we can make with the arc furnace. Uh, somewhere here. All right, so if we want to make like quartz glass, we can put one of the, you know, put glass in one slot and the quartz in these slots. So these ports aren't the input ports. I, for the life of me, do not understand how this machine works, apparently. Um, I'm going to have to do some research, I guess, to figure out why I can't input items into here automatically. Uh, I have figured it out, and now my anger is sated. So, um, there's two inputs on the top. The one on the left is the slots on the left. The one on the right is for the slots on the right. Uh, there's two outputs. The output in the front is for the metals, and the output in the back is for slag, when you make stuff like steel in here. Right, steel... Let's see, steel ingots, when you craft it in a arc furnace, you still get this slag. And I guess uh, only stuff in this slot, which I, as far as I can tell, is only slag, um, gets produced and dumped out the back. So that's what this rear output slot is. All right, so now that we understand how this machine works, I don't think uh, I need to be angry at it anymore. You know what, arc furnace, I owe you an apology. You are a very reasonable machine, and I should have just read the documentation before yelling at you. Anyways, now that that's out of the way, let's see what we can do next. The arc furnace enables us to make a lot of these ender alloys, which um, I'm not quite sure how this... Uh, let's see what this ender mod is. Because instead of using... Well, some of these are for extended crafting, right? Like the Ender Crafter is like the QED from uh, the old Extra Utilities mod, except it's automatable. But I think there's another... Yeah, this Ender Utilities mod I've actually basically never used before, but I think it's very powerful. It has, at the very least, stuff like Ender Chest type behavior, but um, I think it also has some powerful things like this Ender Bow can teleport you or something. Um... But yeah, now that we have the arc furnace, I think we can look into some of the things that this mod can offer us. So let's start by making the Ender Alloys, which according to the quest book, uh, is the first step. Right? We need Ender Alloy, Enhanced Ender Alloy, and Advanced Ender Alloy. Alright, we've been able to craft the various tiers of Ender Alloy. Um, everything here takes a lot of Ender Pearls, so I'm thinking we might have to set up an Enderman farm soon. But uh, I couldn't think of a way to make Endermen spawn while I wasn't in the dimension, either the end or the hunting dimension. So maybe we'll wait until next era for that, or next age, when I think we can do mob spawner shenanigans. But um, now that we have these alloys, let's see what we can do. Um, let's, I guess, work our way towards the moon, which will be the end of the era. And I'm sure we'll have to pick up some of these other things along the way. So to get to the moon, we need an Ender Crafter and Ender Alternators, and uh, we can set that up like it were a QED, so do that. 
The Ender Crafter takes a luminous crafting table, so I went and crafted that off camera. And now let's make one of these and as many of these as we can. Um, there is practically no limit on the number of Ender Alternators you can use, but uh, the more you use, the faster it goes. And it looks like we only had five Eyes of Ender, so that's all we can make for now. So this will probably be a little on the slow side, but it'll be, uh, it'll be enough to get us started. So we can set this up more or less anywhere. It doesn't use power, so that's good. Um, we'll just put it here for now and set these around it. Uh, sure. With that, we can now craft the NASA workbench. The NASA workbench is where we actually craft our rockets. Um, it looks like we actually need a couple more things. We need the assembly IO unit. We should be able to make that. And our um, basic processors from Applied Energistics. So I guess I put off making processors as long as I can. Since this requires the Pneumaticraft uh, assembly IO unit, let's actually make the entire Pneumaticraft assembly line. So I'll go gather up those components and then we can get started on that. All right, let's go ahead and build the assembly line from Pneumaticraft. Now here are the components required. You need one controller, one laser, one drill, at least two IO units, although you could have more, I think. Um, no, maybe not. There's not room for more. Never mind. So exactly two IO units, uh, one assembly platform, and the program. Now the program comes from buying it th through the uh, Imadron tablet. Uh, so let's set that up. The controller is where you have to pipe air into. Let's put it here and connect it to air pressure. Then you need, um, let's see, the table. So it's a multi block so they don't have to be directly next to each other. But um, I like to set up something like this. Um, the two arms, based on the little color of that bit there, determines if they're input or output. So I want one as input, one as output, which means I need a wrench. At least I think I need a wrench. Let's make this one input. There we go. So this one's input, that one's output. And then the drill and laser can go anywhere as long as they are touching the platform. Lastly, we need the program to go in the controller. And you can see that um, it needs relatively high air pressure to function. But now that uh, we have all these components in there, we can craft... Um, it looks like the... Hold on. Yeah, okay, so we can craft stuff like pressure chamber valves more efficiently but and um, all these inscriber presses so in addition to making one of each press what i want to do is make advanced pressure tubes so advanced pressure tubes can be um let's see we can do a block of compressed iron for that advanced pressure tubes can be used to make um higher tier compressors including ones that run off uh, rf so let me get some compressed iron and we'll upgrade our compressor from this uh this coal burning one to an RF burning one. So using the assembly line is pretty simple. You just take the inputs, um, in this case blocks of compressed iron, let's do four for now. Put them in a chest by the IO unit. It'll go grab it. Um, optionally, if it's a little slow, you can also grab some speed upgrades, which appears I have eight of them left over. Obviously using these will make it use more air, but uh, should run faster, maybe has to finish the current operation. So the input arm grabs the thing and sets it on the little table. These animations are pretty slick. And then one of the like the laser arm or the drill arm will go do a little thing to it. Any day now. Uh oh, why is it on standby? Ah, not enough air pressure. So I've been using air pressure to craft um some other things in the meantime. Let's make this run a little bit faster then. So once there's uh, another half uh, atmosphere of pressure, it should get started. There we go, and this is much faster. So um, with some upgrades, the, the little arms like go in and do their thing. And you can even see the item change to uh, those like valves or something and then the little laser does its thing. 
it's adorable i love it um and then when it's done the output arm will grab the final product and put it in a chest adjacent to it so with more speed upgrades this runs faster just uses up a little bit more air but now that we have advanced pressure tubes let's make ourselves a flux compressor so the flux compressor uh as the name i guess suggests uses rf to generate pressure so let's no longer run this regular compressor let's put this here uh, face the other way and then we can configure it to have the same redstone behavior so low signal on i won't put the speed upgrades in it yet and i'll show you why in just a second and let's um plug it in now where do i have power let me get some uh, cables and plug this in all right, our flux compressor is plugged in and it's running now. So you can see it's producing 16 milliliters of air per tick. Um, there's a couple changes though between the old, our old compressor and this one. First of all, this compressor can go up to 20 psi without exploding, but um, our pipes and everything else still explode at five. So that doesn't really help us yet, but it will later. Second of all, this compressor has a heat rating. So if we look at it right now, it's at 24 degrees. If the compressor, um, I think it mentions it here somewhere too. If the compressor gets uh, too hot, it becomes less efficient. So we want to keep it from getting hot. Now, if we don't put any speed upgrades in it, it'll never get so hot that it matters. So let's see, let's put some speed upgrades in it then. If I put, let's start with three. If I put three speed upgrades in it, we can see that its production has gone up significantly. Um, but at the same time, the temperature is going up. The other thing we can notice is that as this redstone signal uh, reaches it, it actually um, it turns on and off immediately. Back when we were using the this old air compressor, right? Even if you turn it off with the redstone signal, it'll finish burning the piece of fuel that it started before it turns off. So I want this machine to run for now, even though I don't have anything for it to do. So I'm just going to vent its air. No, normally, obviously, you don't vent the air coming out of your compressor. That's very wasteful. Um, but we can see that as it runs now, its temperature is starting to go up. And let's actually put a couple more speed upgrades in it. And a couple more. This will do. So running um, seven speed upgrades in it, you can see that even though it's venting air, it's actually at equilibrium, which is pretty funny. But uh, the pressure will, or the temperature will continue to go up. And in fact, let's put a couple more in there. I want the, I want the, you know, let's, let's vent it right here even. So that I can, I can seal up this. So venting immediately. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. Hold on. That was too, too many speed upgrades. Um, my point is if I let it run long enough, you see how its temperature is starting to go up. Well, if the temperature gets so high that, um, that it reaches this little arrow, its fuel efficiency drops to zero effectively. So uh, if we want, we can use this heat for something, but I don't have anything to use heat for at the moment, so I'm just going to vent it. To vent heat, we can put a block of compressed iron next to it, which acts as a heat sink, and I think it hurts to touch it. No, it doesn't, even though it's at 200 degrees Celsius. Um, and to vent heat off that, we can put some actual heat sinks, which will cause it to gradually lose heat. So uh, if you're running any devices that produce an excessive amount of heat, just make sure you, you uh, put compressed iron and some heat sinks on it to dump that heat off. So anyways, um, we don't reasonably need this much air, so I'm going to take out some of these speed upgrades. With less speed upgrades in it, it doesn't produce so much heat that heat is realistically a problem. What's happening? What am I dying to? You hear that, right? Something or someone is taking damage. Maybe a mob spawned underground or something. All right, whatever. I'll worry about it. So, anyways, let's um plug this back in. And uh, now that our air is once again vented, it won't uh, explode or anything. All right. So, um, next thing I want to do is upgrade all these pressure pipes to the uh, advanced version. And uh, I can just do that off camera. Just breaking and replacing all the pipes. Now back to what we were working on originally, we want to make those uh, inscriber presses and those are made with the purper, pearl, and biotype blocks. We can't make the fourth one yet because it's uh, with the engineering press uses diamonds 
and diamonds are staged for age five. So since we can't do that yet, let's uh, just do these for now. So once we have these presses, um, I think we can then go ahead and work on that NASA workbench, right? There, is there anything we're missing? Um, compressed steel, do we make this in? I guess we need to make a Galactocraft compressor. Oh dear, this is going to be a bit. We need soul forged steel. And I think that requires a little bit more, more crafting. Yeah, we have to, okay, so let's, uh, <clears throat> let's build our assemblers and get ready to make the compressor as well. This is taking a lot more steps than I expected. So automating the applied logistics inscriber is a little tricky because uh, we don't have the advanced inscriber. The sidedness of the inscriber is pretty annoying. So the top slot can only be inserted from uh, the sides that have these presses. If you see when it goes, like it slams together. Now you can rotate this block, which is what I did, which is why it's you know pressing sideways and not vertically. Um, the middle slot can only be inserted via the, not the front or back, but the two sides that don't have presses. And then uh, the output can only be extracted the same two sides. So anyways, um, for now, this is how I'm automating. I'm just batch automating it. Uh, you see I have our thing, our input chest labeled. The other thing I realized was that the NASA workbench actually uses an engineering processor, which normally takes diamonds, right? But I was curious how this works, because diamonds are still stage H5. And I saw we need heavy-duty plates for this, which is another compressor recipe. So anyways, let's... um. Now that we have our inscriber made and, and somewhat automated at least, uh, it only takes one item per slot, so you can't just like throw a stack in and let it run. But anyways, now that that's done, let's look to make our in our compressor. So the compressor uses soul forged steel, which can only be made in a stoked crucible. Well, all these other recipes are um, they're just like processing, like reprocessing it. So we need to make a soul urn. Coal dust is easy. Iron ingots are easy. So we need to make filled soul urns um, in order to make soul forged steel. And to do this, my understanding is uh, we have to throw ground netherrack into a filtered hopper that has a urn underneath it. So let's go make some urns and see how this works. So uh, first of all, making ground netherrack causes that ear splitting scream that we have to deal with. And making, um, oops, I'm missing an axle. Making the, uh, you know what? Let me get that axle. So, and uh, here, let, let's let's get that axle over here, so we don't have to listen to that. Oh, good, we have some spares. So making urns is a little annoying. I think we have to put a block of clay on the turntable, and then wait for it to finish. The thing is, first it becomes a crucible and then it becomes a painter or a planter and then it becomes a vase and then it becomes an urn and i think if you leave it too long it actually goes away let's just see what happens so yeah then it becomes a piece of clay so you have to put it on and um you have to put the the clay on and then make sure you pick up the uh urn when it's done so you can't just afk it or use like a, a block placing machine so I'm going to spare you from listening to that scream while I wait for these urns to finish. So I turned my game audio down to as low as it goes without muting it, and it's still a little loud, but uh, let's try this out. So I think we just have to toss eight pieces of ground netherrack in, and that turns our regular urn into a soul urn. So I'm just going to do this a few times until all our urns turn into soul urns. And then we can list, stop listening to that uh, heartless scream. Our soul forged steel should be done. And 11 units of it are done. That's good enough. So I think we can make our compressor now. All right, so this compressor runs off of burnables. So let's grab some charcoal to fuel it for the time being. Um, I think eventually you can upgrade it to a flux compressor, but that looks like it might be an age five thing. So uh, since it can go anywhere, let's put it right here. Um, put some fuel in it, and you 
you just put some of the uh, input materials in. There's some way to view all compressor recipes. So yeah, you just put some ingots in and it makes the plate version of it. Um, unfortunately, you have to use like this type of plate and not the not that type of plate, but what can you do? Uh, it's a little slow, so I'll just let this run for a bit. Maybe I'll add some hoppers to, you know, automatically input an extract from it. Um, and then once this is done, we can continue on towards our NASA workbench. The last thing we have to do before we can craft that NASA workstation is to make our, um, going on here, our... Uh, processors. Do I make this again? Wait, there was another recipe for this like two seconds ago. Oh, I have to engineering press the heavy duty plate. Okay. Skip to step. Engineering press. So once this is done, we'll be able to make our NASA workstation. And I think from there, we're pretty close to being able to build the rocket. Now we won't quite be able to launch it yet because uh, we have to like fuel it and stuff, but let's at least get around to building ourselves a rocket today. So that should be the last component we need. Let's come over here and build the NASA workstation. So you see how because we only have five Ender Alternators crafting, it's going to take it a little while. But while that crafts, let's look at what a rocket will take. So the tier one rocket takes a bunch of heavy duty plates. Rocket fins are just more heavy duty plates, some steel, more heavy duty plates, and oh, look too bad, some tin, steel, compressed tin. Okay, so I made some heavy duty plates, some tin, steel, let's just grab all this, throw it into our system and start crafting. One nose cone. I hope I have enough plates. Four fins. Um, one rocket engine needs a flint and steel. In canister. And a oxygen vent. All right. There we go. So with that, we should be able to, if I grab eight heavy duty plates, should be able to make a rocket. Let's see as our NASA workbench is done. This block looks super cool too. It doesn't take power. I just place it down and um, you start with the tier one rocket schematic unlocked as well as, I guess that's it. As you explore other planets and moons, you can unlock new schematics. Um, but for now, this is all we have. So let me grab a couple chests. These are optional, but they can be used to increase the storage of your rocket. And I think we can just shift click all this in. And there we have it, one tier one rocket. Now, oops. Oh, it doesn't hold its inventory. I wanna make sure that the if the quest requires a specific one, well, I guess I'll never know. All right, so let's... Just make the one with storage. How am I down a plate? What happened? Huh, it seems like each time you exit the UI, you it deletes a couple plates. Now I'm down to five plates. Where'd the other two, where'd the other plates go? Well, I guess now we know. Uh, don't exit that UI with items in it, otherwise you risk getting items eaten. Not that it's a big deal, these are Pretty cheap. All right, so here we have it. One tier one rocket. Looks pretty cool while you hold it too. It's like, I'm Superman with a rocket. Hey. All right, anyways, we still have a few steps left before we're ready to launch this rocket. So I'm just gonna hang on to it for now. But um, let's wrap up this episode here. We uh, were able to get our way to the rocket and um, with a little bit more work, you know, doing some creating some oxygen and fuel and uh, a spacesuit, we should be able to launch our way to the moon pretty soon. So um, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.